Because um, the, the the director said, or the writer, some somebody said that um, the reason we wanted him defeated this hard is because you're going to root for him a bit more after you see him go through something like that. It's like, what? No. no. And it's funny. So I was what, watching this Gary's... particular gang, like this instance, though. Yeah, he's going to be back because he got he didn't get killed. He got sucked into the machine or whatever. Um, I was watching yeah. Gary's video on this, and as you said just earlier, Drake, it's like he's been defeated twice already. I was like, he's been defeated three times because if you count Loki. That's one, and then Wasp, mm -hmm. that's another one. But then, what about when he was defeated by his own Kangs? The fact that he got banished to this place, that's already, he was oh, defeated yeah. then as well. And I was just like, what is with this? And, and um, Fringy brought this up when we were talking about on EFAP, but it's just like, it's an easy comparison. Infinity War, the introduction of Thanos to the heroes himself. He kills Loki, kills Heimdall, beats Hulk in a fight. Yeah, I, I you know what I hate, Pretty straightforward. Right? <clears throat> is multiple instances of the same villain. Because instead of making him more powerful because there's so many of them, it just dilutes that character. It was like exactly the same as in The Matrix Reloaded, where you've got like, you had Agent Smith from the first film, terrifying figure. You know, dangerous, sadistic, uh, seemed to have ideas beyond his programming. Then you have like 500 of them trying to take <laughs> on Neo in that, that ridiculous CGI fight scene where Neo's just throwing them around and like fighting off dozens of them at a time. That doesn't make Smith more frightening as a character. It makes him less frightening because you've just diluted him. You've made him weak individually. You do, but, but, but even in that, they boosted the agents so that they were the same threat as the previous movie. Now imagine if they'd made it so that even if you defeated all of those Smiths, there was just another universe where more Smiths would come out. That That's the yeah. problem with the multiverse. Even if you make the most incredible enemy physically possible in your universe, it's still it, it's still pointless. Well, I, I think the, the human mind needs a person, like an individual, to latch onto as like the the personification of the antagonists or the protagonists or whatever. They they find it quite hard. Like if you just have two CGI armies clashing with each other, it's harder to get invested in them because they're not individuals. They're just a bunch of things like getting pounded against each other. Yeah. And you it's the, the same Matrix with Kang. Like, Re Revelations like, actually recognized that because, you know, it actually tried to reestablish a, a semblance of individuality to the one Agent Smith in particular. Because, as you say, mm. it recognized sort of this, this amorphous blob of badly rendered Agent Smith just isn't that inter interesting to people. But that being said, at least there's more thought that went into the reasons for mass producing Agent Smith. It is trying to represent the spread of a virus through the system. Whereas yeah. in. Um, in, I was about to say in Multiverse of Madness because they're basically the same. In um, yeah. uh, what what the hell was this? Uh, Quantum Mania. That's the one. Um, no, no, there's no <laughs> problem all bullshit, with, with, with with Kang. Like, why did so he wants to destroy the rest of the Kangs because they're messing around with timelines, causing incursions, and he wants to destroy them by destroying the entire timelines they were in. Which is okay. So destroying a timeline is preferable to to making a slight mess of it reasons they banish him down outside of time in the quantum realm with the doom ship that he could theoretically yep. repair to get back into time why are they doing yeah. that don't know um and then yeah why, but they damaged why... the core a little oh, bit damaged yeah, the core, which they, he just fixed because he bumped into were they hoping he died i i don't know but then why wouldn't I they have wiped know. out the timeline he was in i was remembering the scene in multiverse of madness don't they kill the illuminati kill one of the doctor strangers because even though he saved them from thanos yeah. he did so by messing with the multiverse and that's not allowed so they Don't killed him whereas started, the council of cringe the council of kangs they are solely concerned with their dominion over the multiverse and yet the guy who poses the ba the biggest threat to that this exiled kang they just exile him rather than killing him so the council of kangs treats multiversal uh, threats to its dominion less seriously than the illuminati with a doctor strange who just randomly experiments a bit with the multiverse which yep. again just doesn't make sense for villainy stakes either like it's so thoughtless and nonsensical and it's almost yeah just no. It is, the... is the is the premise behind it that if you kill a particular instance of a Kang, like the, it will give rise to like multiple other versions of him. So like no. it's actually no, better it's to because... imprison him that, rather than destroy him completely. When they exiled him, out, he was out of time. Like the quantum mania is a realm outside of the time stream, so it wouldn't mm -hmm. have affected. So they effectively removed him from everything. The, the, this, him, this ties into like when we talk about like goals and stakes and stuff like in terms of like what we as humans can wrap our brains around like thanos mm. had a pretty understandable motivation it was like i understand that there are finite resources in the universe like living beings will eventually deplete them and if they were allowed to endlessly multiply and so my solution is that we you know we prune them essentially we cull them uh to make them 
down to a manageable level. And, you know, okay, fine, you can argue the merits of that and how long it can last and so on. But, like, there's a, at least some kind of uh, goal there. It's an understandable goal. He's he, he's doing what he sees as a good thing. But, uh, you know, it, it's good reasons, but, like, horrible, horrible uh, implementation. With Kang, what is his ultimate goal? Destroy all the timelines except oh, his own one. It, it's but infinite. why? What, what does that achieve? To control the, the, them so that they can't control him. The, the reasons then why? for him doing well, it... Again, what is, what is that... the positive goal for anyone? There are infinite timelines. The, the for him you doing can't it... destroy them all. Yeah, the reasons for him doing it are as infinite as the, there are as many Kangs. It's like when you said we need an individual, I don't really agree. I think that you can uh, sort of have third-party morals or implant your... Like, abdicate your responsibility or your morality to a third-party institution, whether that be an institution or some kind of ideology. I think that's that's fair enough. But when you begin to contemplate infinity, no human mind can comprehend it. And that's where it falls down. It's not that he's not specific. It's that he's not specific in any way, shape, or form. He can't be nailed down in any universe at all. And so every time you take any action against him, it's pointless. We could have literally an infinite amount of movies and Kang would never be defeated because there's just an infinite amount more of him. And Every single actually, action you ever take he, point. He would never win either. So it's just, it's an infinity of nothing happens. To be yeah, fair... Until they arbitrarily what, decide that he does. To be fair, this is what Kang says in Loki Season 1's finale. He literally says all of this. He says it to Sylvie. You can leave me alone and continue what we've been doing infinitely, I guess. Or you can kill me and we'll open up the multiversal war which is originally what gave rise to the Kang we saw in Loki Season 1. All the Kangs fought until one won and controlled everything, and then he got bored. Like, so he, he basically says, like, I'll just come back, because that's all that happens. And it's gotten to the point where I'm just like, wait, so how are the Avengers, I assume, going to defeat Kang, ultimately? If they've basically made him, they've embedded him into the timeline of this universe. Like, he can't, he'll always come back. What are you gonna, and I say this as if they're not gonna go, we need to find the book of Kiel the Gallagher dude. If we read <laughs> yeah, it, that's, that's all gonna, it, it's, gonna, it's gonna come down to, like, a big pawn shop, a sky portal, a, a magical MacGuffin that's gonna, like, just reset everything so there's only one magical timeline that never gets deviated from. And that'll that'll fix everything. Or maybe a wish at the is. center of the universe. Oh wait, Christian Bale already used that. Never mind. Oh, <laughs> Did they even really want that though? Because that would shut off their alternate. Well, we can just bring back this actor whenever we want. Kind of. I, I just of I, th card. I think it's a I think it's an interesting example though of uh, as a writer like uh, raising the stakes to the point where they're incomprehensible. I, I think that's where we're going to now. Like if you if you make an infinite amount of universes where your actors can come back well, from death whenever you want, are you raising them or lowering them? When when you say that like we are fighting to preserve the entirety of all existence across time and space, like every possible multiverse of universes, uh, I don't know how you can possibly top that. That is like it as far as like reality goes. Uh, it's I think a, like Star Thanos was only concerned that. about our own universe, and even then. You know, you're fighting for 50% of the life in the universe. The entire universe. And, like, we've gone beyond that. Yeah. Like, we, we can't really top this. This is it. By the way, can I just say, the DNA for their fuckery was actually in Infinity War to Endgame. Because you're highlighting, like, why we cared about Thanos. We talked about his introduction, you talked about his motivation. They fucked it up. In Endgame, we didn't even fight that Thanos. We fought mm -hmm. different Thanos. We didn't even know who any of these yeah. people were. What a huge mistake that was. Uh, Endgame was a mistake in general, but still. I, I hate Endgame. I've always hated Endgame as a movie. Um, I, I think Dude, I, I cared more about, like, um, Captain America's Civil War. Like, just um, Bucky Barnes versus uh, Iron Man versus Captain America at the end. Then, that that had me yeah. more invested than any of this fucking garbage. Oh, dude, it's three I people with, like, understandable motivations for, like, fighting each other. Perfect. That's what I want. Does it make you more Infinity or less War, invested yeah. to know that there are infinite versions of those three characters and the fight pans out <laughs> that, in infinite that's what different think. correlations? Oh, yeah. and we like, can none see of them all. This is where Disney we go War. with this. It, it, Once you like, open that door, there's no closing it. That's the problem. Just from psychology, diffusion responsibility, you know, if there's loads of people around you, you don't feel as responsible for an action because you just assume other people will take the action that you should probably have, should have had, like phoning an ambulance or the police or something, means the same for this, that you don't care much about one universe as you do for the other. I cared more about Star Trek when there was literally a ship that went around trying to enforce one time frame than I did 
in everything else. It's like, okay, this is the time frame that matters. You've now done an incursion into this, which changes it, which is a very similar kind of thing to what the original they were doing in Loki. Star Trek had a very similar timeline, but it mattered more that they were trying to reset it to the events that were meant to happen in the first place. I think the where they messed up was having a guy that literally chose the timeline in the first place rather than having it with fate. And the moment you go to infinite, you've now diffused responsibility across everything. So why should I care about any universe at all? Because it's just one in particular out of an infinite amount. There's no reason I should choose that over another one. And let's say these ones did go to war. Let's say only one of them could exist. And so you now have timeline three versus timeline 2000. Both of them have the same moral responsibility to exist. And so who am I supposed to root for? It, well, it precludes yep. any kind of character investment because, you know, Thanos, you, no one really conceptualizes the wiping out of half a universe because we don't think on that sort of cosmic scale. But when you've got single iterations of our main cast who we've invested in and built up over the course of however many years phases one to three took, you can represent the cosmic consequences of Thanos' finger snap. Half the universe goes, but we see that in the loss of half the people we've grown up with and we've learned to love and all the rest yep. of that. Whereas now, now... No, because how do we know who's dead? Well, no one's ever really gone anymore, are they? Because nope, nope. Wanda is theoretically dead. Well, you know she's going to come back. Um, any given character who dies as a result of anything that Kang does or any other character does will, well, could just pop back into existence from another multiverse. So what, again, are the stakes and why should we care if, say, Wanda gets crushed in a Doom Temple? Because somewhere else there's another Wanda who will come back and save the day at some point. This is what I mean, man. Like they they've elevated the stakes and the scope of this to the point where it's now incomprehensible, and just... like they've they've opened the door on so much ridiculous um, plot contrivance nonsense that anything can happen at any moment. No character is ever dead. Anything can happen. Any like thing can come along to save you or ruin your day. Um, what's the point? What's the point in any of this? Though, that... Almost everything you guys have highlighted is in, even in best world scenario. Like all these problems would come in if it were well written, but we're not even close to that. Like <laughs> it's it's a fucking diabolically horrifically written thing, and it has all these problems with it as well. This, this... Thanks for watching this video. If you're interested in supporting my channel, but you don't want to bother with Patreon or any of that other stuff, then I might suggest taking a look at my latest novel, Dark Harvest, on Amazon. It's got hundreds of five-star reviews, I'm reliably informed that it's pretty good, and well, it really helps to support creators who just want to tell good stories without THE MESSAGE. message. I'll put the link in the description if you want to take a look. Anyway, that's all I've got for today. Go away now.